When do you learn the most about money? During your good experiences or with your bad? Well, in this episode, I'm gonna share with you the 10 biggest mistakes you can make with money in this episode of the Seven Fear Squad, starting at three, two, one, let's go. What's cracking, everybody? Money smart guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas, and I'm very, very excited about this episode. All right, so let's get into it. What are some of the biggest mistakes that we can make with money? So number one, number one biggest mistake you can make with your finances is to have inconsistent income. Well, sometimes you say, Matt, well, I'm not making enough money, Matt. Well, listen, that was me. I was in the Marine Corps. I was making $20,000 a year as a sergeant in the Marines after eight years serving in their military. And I was barely making ends meet. I was barely paying the bills. I was so financially frustrated because not only was I having inconsistent income, but it was also insufficient income. Oftentimes people say, I got debt, but it's worse when you have falling or trailing income. So if you're going to have a way to get out of this problem, to not have this mistake, have a consistent way to make more money as you get older. Number two, bad debt. Not all debt is created equal. There's good debt and there's bad debt. Rich people learn how to use good debt in their favor. In other words, they borrow for things that appreciate in value. They borrow money for a business. You're investing into real estate. You're investing into a business. You're investing in things that go that grow in value. But bad debt is things that are going down in value, that depreciate in value. This is not my money, bro. I do not have nothing. <laughs> Number three, emergencies. Not having a plan for emergencies. How many times have you run into a pothole? How many times have you run into an emergency? Your car doesn't start. <laughs> uh, things happen with your kids. Things can happen with your parents. Emergency, emergency, emergency. And next thing you know, you can never catch up. In fact, you start ra racking up more bad debt. Well, here's one way to minimize emergencies. Increase your savings, but it's hard to increase your savings when you have inconsistent or insufficient income. Or number two, consider buying insurance. Listen, when I was broke, when I was a single father, I bought a lot of life insurance because I was thinking about making sure that if something were to happen to me, I have other streams of income or I have pools of money from the insurance companies to help me mitigate or minimize going into debt just in case I needed the money here for emergencies. Thank God, in many instances, I had either savings and or insurance, so therefore I'm not getting deeper and deeper into debt because when emergencies come up, and they will, you wanna make sure you're not financially set off track to getting to where you wanna go. Income taxes, listen, one of the biggest expenses that you'll have each month is income taxes. I'm crazy enough to take on Batman, but the IRS, no, thank you. Whether you're self-employed, paying self-employment taxes, whether you're working for somebody else, W-2, the biggest thing they lop off your paycheck right away from gross income to making net income is income taxes. So here's the thing, here's what I discovered. Rich people, they make money through income and, and dividends and interest, others, make their money on salary and or commission. They gotta work for the money versus the rich, they find ways to make money work for them. But back to number one, if you have insufficient income, you'll never get money to work for you if you're just living paycheck to paycheck. I quit. Number five, stock market losses. If you're attempting to save for your retirement, let's say you have a 401k plan, you have an IRA, let's say you're, you're, start, you're starting to save and you wanna be financially independent sooner in your life than later. Well, if the stock market hammers you, the question you gotta ask yourself is how long does it take to recover based on the interest rate I'm looking to make my money in if I'm saving for my financial future? I'll give you an example. If you got a 25% loss in the stock market, okay? If you, if you lost money in the market, you need a 50% gain just to get you back to square one. If you had a 50% loss in the stock market, you need a 100% gain the next year just to get you back to square one. By the way, if you're expecting a 50% gain to get you recovered or 100% gain to recover your losses from one year over the other, you're just asking for more trouble. Why? The higher the interest rate, the higher rate of return you're looking for anything you put your money into, the greater the risk. Sometimes you just have to take a risk. So why try to fix a bad situation already by exposing yourself to more risk? Again, question you need to ask yourself. If you can find ways to avoid losing money altogether, you will avoid one of the biggest mistakes with money. Number six, healthcare costs. The number one reason why people have emergencies in their life, the number one reason why people file bankruptcy is number one reason is health care costs. In the early 2000s, I realized right away, my parents one day will also age two as well. So I'm thinking about my parents in early 2000s. Guess what I got them? I got them a long-term care policy because I needed to make sure that in case something happened to my parents, and they needed health care, and I could not be around because I'm busy raising my own family and busy raising and building my own business. Well, that's why I bought a long-term care policy without ever thinking I'd ever need it. Well, 
lo and behold, now I need it. I just recently put my parents in a retirement community where they have activities, where they have food, where they have people cleaning the, the condo for them. I put them in a community where long-term care insurance is paying for things like that. So therefore, my parents don't have to sell the house to pay for the care. Their parents are doing their retirement accounts to pay for that care. They still remain, and I remain financially independent. Why? Because we anticipated the cost of health care down the road. Number seven biggest mistake is inflation. We are facing it right now. All of us are facing it right now. Higher cost for food, higher cost for education, higher cost for gas. Do I need to go on? Higher cost for everything due to the rising cost of goods and services. They call this the silent tax. So inflation, if your income, back to number one, if your income is not increasing over the rates of inflation, you are getting behind the power curve and you're suffering a mistake and potentially you may not even know it. Number eight, lack of financial education. Think about this real quick. Imagine if you were raised in a system that taught you about entrepreneurship, that taught you about personal and leadership development, that taught you about human relationships. I'm thankful Governor DeSantis of Florida just recently passed, just recently passed in 2022, legislation that requires at least a semester of financial education in high school requirement before graduating. For those of you uh, that went through child development class in high school, where you're walking around with a baby, pretend baby. How about this? Why don't you have a pretend budget? <laughs> or pretend business. Wouldn't it be wise to get a financial education or human relation education and to actually find out who you are? One big thing that's lacking today is not just financial education, it's also human relationships because you make money, not just individually by yourself solo. You make money long term by building a team of people, by building a company, by building a movement, by building an organization. Why? Have you heard that saying? If you want to do it fast, do it yourself. But if you want to go far, consider building a team. Number nine, poor financial discipline. Why? Two things. Lack of accountability. Man, I'm going to do me. I'm going to do me. It's one of the worst things I hear. I'm going to do me. Well, what happens if me is insufficient? What if me is inconsistent? I'm going to do me. Well, guess what happens when you have accountability? Chances are you have somebody in your life that's stretching you, somebody that's mentoring you, somebody that's causing you to have personal growth. And when you have personal growth, you have spiritual growth, you have emotional growth, you got financial growth. Everything about you is growing because you commit to lifelong personal growth because they are now holding you accountable to your growth. If you want to get better, or the opposite is then you just get bitter. Oh! Your choice. So last but not least, 10 biggest mistake of money. Not thinking ahead. Just thinking six inches in front of your face. Just think, I just need to pay the bills today because a Conversation with yourself about just paying the bills for today leads you to a lot of short-term decisions, will lead you to a lot of short-term mistakes. Sometimes we make things in our short-term because of our desperation. So as I wrap up, a couple questions I want you to ask yourself. Number one, does my money reflect me? Does my current financial situation reflect me? Well, man, I'm a good person. I know, but does your financial situation allow, to, allow you to reflect that upon yourself to, so you can be, express yourself that much greater? Because I've always believed that money is simply a magnifier. It's going to magnify your character. It's going to magnify you. It's going to magnify what's on the inside. Well, some of you got, are some very good people out there, but you're not being magnified. Why? Because of inconsistent income, because you don't have the financial resources to magnify the deep down plans you have to serve and help our communities, to be a kingdom builder to build a church, a nonprofit organization, to build a community center, deep down inside, you want to do that. But you can't do that. Why? Because your money is not a reflection of you because you're falling into these mistakes with money. Number two, what skills or awareness do I need to have with my finances? What blind spots is my pride in my ego keeping me from learning? Is my cup filled? For what? Why is your cup filled so much and yet you're broke? Why is your cup, your cup filled so much? Why, how come you're not wanting to learn something new and yet deep down inside your bank account right now is reflecting, bro, you need to learn a lot more things than you currently think you need to know. Why? What skills or awareness do I need to have? You have to be self-aware of what your current financial situation is right now because if you let pride and ego and past pain affects you with your financial situation today, the greatness that I know that is inside of you that's waiting to come out the next best version of you that's waiting to meet you will never be expressed, will never be seen. Why? Because of the lack of skills and awareness in your life. Number three, last but not least, who can help me? Who can I run with? You need somebody in your life that's causing you to stretch. 
You need somebody in your life that you can wake up one day and say, hey, man, are we going to the gym? Like right now after the shooting of this video, I got my gym buddy, Milton, come with me to the gym, pushing me, holding me accountable to my goals, my dreams. Why? Because I want options for the people that I love and care about. And the last thing I want to be, to be a burden to those I'm in business with, to be a burden to my government, to be a burden to my country of which I love. So I wrap things up. Are you finding yourself in one of these mistakes? What are your thoughts, your questions, your ideas, your feedback? You agree with me? You don't agree with me? Put it in the comment section below. Before I let you go, please check out this video here. 35 minutes that will change the way you see money in an interview I did here with Patrick David, the host of Value Tamer, the CEO, founder of PHP Agency. We spent Christmas in Whitefish, Montana. What our conversation was like, a fireside chat right here with uh, Patrick and David. So if you're watching this on Facebook, consider liking our page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you hit like, hit subscribe, and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. That being said, from Dallas, Texas, I'm your Money Smart Guy. I appreciate you tuning in. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. Thank <laughs> you.